Dear Diary, the town of Remington has sentenced me to work in the mines. They claim my so-called crimes are theft and murder of two parents, mass slaughter of goblins, and serving unsanitary food. I don't care what they say. The people and goblins deserved it, and the food is my mama's recipe. But I've found a way out. I see them sometimes, in the wheat field, and I'm going after them. April 1st, 2022. Fun chunk, man. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Extreme Fun Chunk Iron Man. As you hopefully saw in my last video, I lamped to 17 Hunter, which allows me to catch baby implings, and with access to Puro Puro, or Puro Puro, however that's pronounced, through the wheat field, that also gives me access to all of the rest of the implings from there. And as you can imagine, this adds quite a few objectives and grinds for me to complete, so I'm going to go by the implings as I go, I guess, instead of listing them all out at once. And of course, the first and likely biggest grind of the chunk that is added by access to implings is catching the highest level impling, which would be a lucky impling at level 89 hunter. Thankfully, I can get a net so I don't have to get 99 to catch them barehanded, but it's still a significant grind. So to get to 89 Hunter from 17, I need 4.8 million experience, or over that. And unfortunately for me, the implings that are a higher level and give better experience are also uh, considered rare implings and have fewer spawns than the common implings which go from uh, baby to eclectic so if i were to catch all baby implings i'm looking at needing to catch uh, 268,000 implings uh, at a maximum and if i were to catch nothing but eclectics i would be catching 151,000, which is quite a lot uh, and there, there's a little bit of variability there because there are different experience values for catches based on whether the impling spawns in Puro Puro or Gilan or the RuneScape surface, uh, but those surface spawns actually also exist in Puro Puro, they're just uh, less common, so I could, uh, if I was catching baby implings, for example, I would be getting mostly 18 experience per catch, but occasionally I would be getting 20 experience per catch. But yeah, I'm looking at at least 150,000 impling catches, probably, to get 89. So moving on to the implings, the first impling I can catch is the baby impling. And while it doesn't give a whole lot of useful items, uh, some that may be useful in the future, like silver bar or hard leather, if I get my crafting up, or the air talisman for rune crafting, there is one item it gives that adds a big grind, and that is the knife. All of those logs that I was able to cut and burn earlier, I now also have to fletch with the highest fletching requirement that I can do with just a baby impling being the U shield. And so back to the gameplay. The first thing I did, since I didn't need to use any of the impling drops right away, was instead trade all the implings in for jars and stock up on the maximum number of jars, which is a thousand, so that I wouldn't have to trade them in constantly and could slowly go through that pile instead. There we go, 22. Now I can start kidnapping younglings. At level 22, I unlock Young Implings, and they have a few drops of note. There's the Steel Axe, which will speed up woodcutting a little bit. And there are gear upgrades like the Steel Full Helm and Studded Chaps. But uh, most importantly, there is the Bowstring and Yu Longbow. So with the Bowstring, I can string uh, unstrung bows and so I have to make those for my fletching grind and with U bows unlocked I also need to get my ranged up so I can wield them.
There we go, that's 28. Now I can catch Gourmets. The Gourmet Impling at 28 Hunter doesn't actually add any immediate grinds for this chunk, uh, but the food could prove useful in the future, and the Garden Pie in particular is going to come in handy later in this chunk, and I'll get to that. There we go, bought some imp propellant. It's uh, not something I'm ever actually going to use, but it's a thing that can be done here, so there we go. And there we go, I've stocked up on a thousand jars, that way hopefully I won't need to get any more for a while. It should last me. And uh, now I can start opening them. At 36, I can catch Earth Implings, and they have a few things of note. First off is the Mithril Pickaxe, which is a beautiful item that will finally speed up the mining grind whenever I get back to that. Aside from that, there are Talismans, which could be useful in the future if I need them for runecrafting. There are Noted Mithril and Coal Ore, which I will talk about later. But most importantly, there are Jangerberry seeds, which can be grown in the bush patch that I have in the Melzar's Maze chunk, and those require 48 farming, which means I would have to rake to 48, with raking giving 4 experience per weed rake. Not going to be very pleasant, but that garden pie that I mentioned earlier will give me a 3 level boost to farming, which means I only have to get to 45 via raking, which is still rough, but not as rough. And then, of course, there's compost and super compost to help me grow the bushes when I can. And there we go, I can catch Essence Implings, and they're going to be my new best friend for quite a while. So the Essence Impling is at the same time one of the best Implings for me, and also the worst. The good things are that, you know, I have access to runes, I have access to Noted Pure Essence, which I will be stocking up on uh, in the case of future runecrafting grinds. But on the other hand, I have access to nature runes, and that means I can cast super heat. Uh, once I get the level for it, I can... On the one hand, I can stop wasting all the ores that I've been mining, like I did up until 80. I don't have to drop them or sell them to the general store anymore, but I now have access to mithril ore through earth implings. And so I'm going to have to get 50 smithing just from by super heating. Uh, so... That's going to require a lot of nature runes. Superheating ore doesn't give a lot of experience, and so I'm going to be spending most of my time in Puro Puro focusing on Essence Implings and Earth Implings for the noted ores. And unfortunately for me, they have slower spawn times than all of the other common Implings, including Eclectic, which have a higher level requirement. So my experience rates are not going to be great, even from a Puro Puro standpoint, and that's unfortunate. Additionally, I'm going to be saving most of my inventory space for Impling Jars, just so I don't slow down Hunter even more, so I'm not going to be keeping most of these runes aside from the Fire Runes, Nature Runes, and Noted Pure Essence. And I also need to get my magic levels up a little bit, so the plan is anytime I get Law Runes, I'm also going to 
look for some air runes and just telegrab anything near nearby or drop things and telegrab them, and that will be my magic training for when I'm not uh, leaving Puro Puro and doing super heat. Eclectic Implings drop a few useful gear upgrades, the shield, the dragon hide chaps of ambraces, rune dagger, a battle staff for auto casting magic, but they also drop adamant ore, which means I no longer have to smelt mithril ore, but rather I have to get 70 smithing superheating so I can superheat an adamant bar. With nature runes being a 1 in 100 drop, from Essence Simplings for 13 at a time. Doing the math, I'm looking at an estimated 254,000 Essence Simpling catches to hit 70 smithing. And I'm definitely not going to be catching nothing but Essence Simplings, and that's still well above what I need to get 89 Hunter. Uh, some of it can be offset by lamps and books and the occasional nature rune from maze random events but this is still by far the worst grind in this chunk and frankly depending on where i'm at by the time i hit 89 hunter i may backlog it until i get a more reliable source of nature runes until then i will focus on essence implings and try to get my smithing as high as i possibly can but getting Close to 99 Hunter and Piro Piro just to get 70 smithing via superheat or nature runes that are very rare is frankly something I don't know if I'm going to be willing to put up with. I had until this point been spending lamps and books of knowledge on agility because run energy is very useful in Piro Piro, but here I realized I needed to use them on my actual grinds, and so I decided after I hit level 2, I would put them in farming until I hit 45 and got that done and could train that in a way other than raking, and then after that throw all of them on smithing until I finally finish this grind. There we go, 56 Hunter. I also managed to accidentally drop all the pure essence I was saving up, so a uh, bit of an unfortunate loss. Not a huge deal since I'll be getting plenty more, but yeah. And so my journey to waste fewer ores begins here. Incredible. Look at this, I don't have to drop them. Here we go, finally starting my fletching grind.
and there we go there's 35 the one willow tree in this chunk gets to be my friend for quite a while going forward There we go, 40 ranged. I can use the uh, Yu longbow that I got from Impling. Nice. I had forgotten and now I've remembered that uh, with a knife, I can make and cook chopped onion, which is a slightly more reliable food source than anything else. And there we go, finally 75 fletching. I can uh, make shafts out of magic logs now. And uh, yeah, I, I get to, I'm going to go back to Puro Puro and uh, I'll get 80 at some point in the future so I can make actual bows, but at least now I can not waste any magic logs that I get from nature implings. So. And there we go, there's 58 Hunter. I can catch Nature Implings now. Nature Implings are the first of the rare Implings. Unlike the other Implings before them, which all have their own individual set spawn points, the rare Implings all share two set spawn points in the corners. And then there's the occasional rare Impling that might show up from one of the random surface spawns in Puro Puro. So they're a lot harder to come by. I'm going to go over all of them at once to get the rest of my requirements listed. So to start with the nature impling, they don't have a whole lot that is useful to me right now. They do have a more common Jangerberry seed drop, which is nice, but most importantly they drop magic logs, which means I can now make magic bows and magic shields, which raises my fletching requirement. The Magpie Impling is wonderful because it gives me a whole host of nice gear upgrades like the Amulet of Power, Gloves and Boots, a Rune Square Shield, Rune Weapons, a Dragon Dagger if I ever complete Lost City, but it doesn't currently giving, give me any extra grinds. Uh, the Rune Bar and Diamond could be worrisome in the future, but for now I don't have to care. Ninja Implings at 74 Hunter also gives some very nice gear upgrades, as well as a source of much needed prayer potions. But they give Onyx Bolts. Onyx Bolts require 61 range to equip, and they can be enchanted at level 87 magic, with the highest level spell that is available to me with the runes that I can get from Essence Implings. Which is why, as I mentioned before, when considering runes and spells for chunk tasks, it didn't actually matter because these guys are going to make it so I have to get to the highest level spell I can cast anyway. The Dragon Impling at 83 also gives some very nice drops, particularly the Amulet of Glory and the Dragon Bones of Baby Dragon Bones, but 
the weapons and seeds could be useful in the future too, as well as the summer pie. The problem? They give dragon dart tips, and I can get feathers from the maze random event, which means my fletching requirement for this chunk is raised once again to 95 fletching. And finally, there's the end goal here, the lucky impling at 89 hunter. This impling gives a random reward from any tier of clue scroll aside from beginner, and so it's not going to give me any other requirements up front, it's going to be if I get an item that requires me to do something else, then I will do something else, much like random event rewards or rare drops. And so here finally is the full list of goals that I need to reach to escape Remington after being here for a full year and still having more to do. And with that, I will leave you to a montage of the rest of the footage that I have saved up until this point. Enjoy. Well, sorry guys, I accidentally clicked the uh, Camelot Teleport instead of Telekinetic Grab. Uh, account ruined. Sorry. Alright, I'm back in Puro Puro, and despite my account being irreparably tarnished, I have decided to continue playing. Hope you'll forgive me. And uh, to rectify my mistake, I have filtered out the Teleport spells, so that will not be happening again. Alright, now that I have Cosmic Runes and 49 Magic, I can finally enchant this ring that I've had almost since the beginning of this account. Alright, got a Gravedigger, so I think I'm going to deposit my Pure Essence and uh, Fire Runes here. I wanted to put away my Gloves and Amulet too, but I forgot to take them off before I got here, so... Alright, I got another Gravedigger, and this time I remembered to take my stuff off so I can bank them in preparation for the new stuff that I will get from Magpie Implings shortly. And with this, I finally have 65 Hunter, and I can go catch uh, Magpie Implings. Eighty-one mining. Been a while since I got one of these levels. That is 55 magic, which would be very big if I didn't have to use all of my nature runes on super heat.
And there is 61 range. That is my range goal. And there is 58 magic and 1,000 total. And I think that's a good milestone to end part three on. So I'll uh, I guess show off some things. Here, here are my current stats. My time played, 63 days and one hour. Here's all my loots. Well, maybe not all. I mean, let's see. We'll, we'll check my impling count. Yeah, I've got 15,000 essence implings, but my loot only has a little less than 9,000. Yeah, there's my impling count. Here's some of my loots from my time playing so far. And I, I think a lot of the uh, imp and goblin data was lost at some point, probably around the leagues, but yeah, that's, uh, that's where I'm at. And that is the end of the three-part intro to my series. Thank you to everyone who has watched, liked, commented, subscribed, and otherwise supported me so far. Uh, it'll likely be a while before I upload another video for this series, because I have long grinds ahead of me, but relatively little content from those grinds. So depending on how long this takes, I may do a mini update video, or I have an idea for a different series that I don't think has been tried yet. Uh, so to fill in that content gap, however long it is, we'll see what happens. I'll leave with another beautiful paint drawing from me. Thanks again. You're all wonderful.